What's wrong with democracy? I think many people will agree that there's something amiss with democracy. But what? The problem isn't parasites leeching off the productive segment of the population. If that were the case, the poor wouldn't be getting poorer as their share of wealth shows. Instead, the poor and the middle get poorer, and the very rich get richer. So it seems that somewhere in that power difference, that increasing gap, is where the problem lies. But there are so many of us in the chunk of population that's doing worse, and so few in the sliver that's doing immensely better. How can that be? In times long past, the answer was simple. Military oppression. Don't pay your taxes and the king or your local nobleman will throw you in debtor's dungeon. And if you're not satisfied with the way things are being run, off with your head. Many people seem to want to put today's problems down to the same mechanisms of violent oppression. After all, big government has the police and the army, and the IRS will send them over to your house if you don't pay your taxes. So, violent big government oppressing its people, case closed. Or is it? Obviously not. The defining feature of medieval feudalism and monarchy was that people didn't have any rights beyond shut up and do what you're told. And no mechanism for changing that situation aside from violent rebellion existed. I mean, that was the point of the system. That's not the case today at all. I mean, sure you can say that Bush stole an election. Yes, there are very dodgy things that go on every election with people being disqualified because they happen to share the name of a convicted felon. And it's very silly that people that were caught for some minor drug offense are excluded because they are felons. And there are various things that happen to make people that are in certain income brackets less likely to go to the polls. Yes, the system is slightly gamed to maintain the status quo. But none of those things are sufficient in magnitude to explain why we maintain a system we're so unhappy with. Why we maintain a system that's so out of whack with where the bulk of people want to go. The fact is, if 55% of people voted for actual change instead of Obama change, then change would happen. Either that or the elite would have to take power violently. Some people believe we're close to that and that it might happen. Personally, I don't. I think that we as citizens in democratic countries have the power to make changes to the system or to overturn it completely and non-violently through elections. Yet we don't do either. And getting back to the scummy parasites are leeching off us argument, apparently the scummy parasites in society aren't that scummy or nasty, since apparently they're, dis they're satisfied with increasingly lower entitlements and more pressure on those entitlements. In fact, people consistently and blatantly vote against their interests, one doesn't even need to assume that people are perfectly rational for this to be surprising. Instead, this phenomenon of people voting against their interests suggests people are completely irrational to the point of utter insanity, which, to paraphrase Einstein, involves voting the same guys into office term after term expecting different results. But we're not all insane. If we were, we'd have eaten each other's faces by now. So if the undermining of the rationality assumption can't get us to where we are today, what can? The undermining of the information assumption. The assumption that we understand what's going on well enough to be able to reach a solid conclusion. People talk about means of production, or about income, or about wealth. But that's only part of the story in a world where the majority can take what they want if they want, and that's the world that democracies live in. It's not the material wealth in itself that keeps the elite on top. It's their ability to manipulate popular thought, their ability to obfuscate, their ability to convince us that we, the others, we're each other's worst enemies. It's the elite that has enthralled us as well as Iron Chains could, with public relations and advertising and political contributions, all amounting to naught but propaganda, which, of course, public relations is nothing but a euphemism for. By controlling popular culture and popular discourse, by ruling the airwaves and many in the professional pundit intelligentsia, they've taken our freedom to see the world as it truly is underneath the shiny wrappings. Can any of us 
ever truly objectively understand and know the world? No. But without the enormous distortion inflicted by the powerful, we might begin to approximate a real understanding of the world, its workings and its injustices more closely. Perhaps to the point that given the billions of spots of light in a dark universe that is humanity, we may collectively begin to shape it in ways that benefit everyone and anyone, without specific regard to the interest of some or other interest group that happens to have maneuvered themselves into prime position for today. I oppose the private control of means of production because I believe everyone should be rewarded for their contribution of effort at least, not for their mere accumulation of machinery and mechanism. But even more vehemently, I oppose the private control of the means of mass communication, which in the hands of the few become the means of mass manipulation of the many. The world today proves the effectiveness of such control and its grip is both tighter and infinitely more subtle than that of any gun barrel. It is our right and our duty as citizens, and more importantly as human beings, to shape our communities. Abstract entities such as corporations have no place in these ponderings. We should not allow them to influence our political process, and we should seriously reconsider the enormous effect that they have on popular culture and popular thought. Free the media, free the mind.